So for this representation, um, it is quite, uh, now we will we look at actually on a more detailed part. So we have here the arithmetic and logic unit, the program counter and the instruction register at the upper side. We, already, we are aware of the arithmetic and logic unit. So the program counter and instruction register um, for clarification, the program counter is actually part of the control unit that determines the instruction being executed and the instruction register inst um, the, the address. And by the, um, let me make it clear that the program counter contains the address being executed and the instruction register are the instruction being executed. So they are almost the same, but um, the program counter actually points to an address on which part of the instruction is being executed and the instruction that is being executed at this moment in time is the instruction register, okay? So during the execution and the, the passing of data between the memory address to the, the different instruction and the data, so if we will notice that it's bus or packet, if you know this one before, it contains the address, uh, the data and the address and we have the control unit as the overall supervisor or the, con or the one controlling, as I said before, the instruction, or it is like a tick, tick of the clock that um, directs everyone to perform an instruction at the same time or move to another instruction. So if you look at this one, so we have memory address register. This, this registers actually contains the address of the instruction to be executed executed and memory data register contains the data um, at this point and the control unit directs the, the, the date the the date memory address register and the date the data registers to perform or execute at the same time. So we have also an accumulator. What's the purpose of the accumulator as the words itself? Accumulators actually play a acts as a placeholder of the temporary instruction or data that need to be executed and uh, it is partner with general purpose register or they can, this can be considered as a, also a placeholder. So um, we have, let, me clarify, uh, let me expand more on the accumulator, why we need to have an accumulator. So for instance, if you will add a three sequence of numbers, so we have three sequence of number. Um, the, the program counter actually points to the memory address register um, where, where the, the location of the, the, the instruction and the memory data register where the data is being stored. So the first instruction, if you add two numbers, the ALU, if you imagine ALU, there is only two major, um, major uh, path. The other one is the 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 what value one and the other part of the ALU is the value two, so the answer for the that one would be added to the third value. That's because we are to add three numbers. So the total of the first two numbers will be placed at the accumulator, and the memory address of the program count uh, program counter will point the address of the third data of the third um, variable to be added. And after that, um, a data will be uh, fetched into the instruction register, uh, the fetch to, to add to the data from the accumulator. So you can imagine that the computer actually, um, I, you can imagine that um, if the arithmetic and logic unit actually accepts two values, so if you have a continuous addition, the previous, um, data that had been added by the ALU will be placed in the accumulator. So if you can imagine, um, because this is hard for me, if you if, if you are if you have background on on programming, the memory address register determines the index. It is an in the index of the data and the memory data register is the register that holds the data itself. No? And the program counter actually is just pointing out uh, pointing a particular address where we are actually um, executing the instruction as of now. And the instruction register, what's the instruction to be executed and the ALU are 
the one performed operation. So um, the accumulator is, is uh, the function of the accumulator is to hold temporary values that will be needed in the next instruction. So other than that, um, we have a memory here. So uh, later we will expand. I think I will expound this one, but um, on the concept of memory. But every every this is not only the main memory, but this is the memory at the central processing unit. Although we we'll later there is a hierarchy about the memory, but this one the memory address register is actually stored in the memory as well as the data and control unit. And these are they are all connected to the bus that we have seen before and the interfaces outside of that and the related device. Okay, so if you have questions, you can place a, a questions on our discussion to further your understanding and to elaborate more on this one. And you can search Google if you want to, but if you want to discuss it further, you need to ask questions, I can answer that if I, I can, if, if there are enough times or if I'm knowledgeable also on that aspect that you will be asking. So if you can, uh, the, the, the computer is actually executing machine language. So, so for example, there's only a move, jump up, and uh, the rest of the instruction from your CPU and from your memory. This is a representation. And each representation of the machine language actually lo uh, located, uh, represented, represented as zeros and ones in the memory of the computer. So, uh, for instance, if you will look at x86, x86 instruction set, um, um, so that's 886. Actually, if you imagine that the computer actually uses 86 instruction to perform all the operations at the central processing unit, that's why they, they call it x86, meaning 86 instructions. And how do we look at that instruction? The, the, Instruction looks like this one. We have move, jump, add, multiply, and the rest of the instruction that follow. But it, uh, it the total is 86 instruction. And in fact, it was used later on more advanced computers. And that's instruction set, set of instruction that can be performed by the CPU. So the instruction would look like example add, uh, and the instruction code would be equivalent to 0, x00, that's hexa multiply an equivalent to 0xdc. And it's not the actual representation. I just use that to, to appreciate, uh, to, to um, make, make you understand that there's a certain code for each of the instruction being used internally within the computer. And as of now, you have also an understanding or basic understanding about uh, risk and cis meaning or, uh, um, the, the, the complex instruction set and the simple instruction set uh, and the difference between the two because there is an offset between this there is an advantage and disadvantage for risk and sys computers and you might have encountered this in your earlier subject but there's an important this is an important concept in computer architecture that at least you will have a background with for future references and the hierarchy of main memory also. So we have um, at the highest level, we have the CPU, which is also one of the fastest um, per memory performance, which is we call that a register. So all the memory inside the CPU are considered registers. We have the L1, L2, L3 cache memory, okay, the SRAM. So this is, this is still, um, a temporary cache, meaning this is nearer to the CPU, a temporary memory storage. Then we have the main memory is the RAM. So this is what we call the actual RAM in your memory. Or when you buy a computer, this is what we call the RAM, the DRAM aspects. And the last one is the secondary memory storage, magnetic or flash drive. This is in the actual your hard disk. This is your hard disk. And also your flash drive, of course. And um, if you can see the diagram, we have uh, as the low as the type of memory is on the bottom part of the triangle, you have more volume. That means the CPU can accommodate only a small part of data, while the secondary storage has, I can accommodate a large amount of data. On the left side also in the latency and persistence, 
uh, we have lower latency or persistence while on the right side as the performance endurance and cost per unit is the is the more uh, if you are if it's in the upper part of the triangle that means uh, it's more faster compared more faster and also equivalent to cost um, if uh, when I was in undergrad years I asked this why not we create a faster memory unfortunately as such as for example use in the CPU or in the cache memory why not put it as a secondary storage um, so and the answer is that we they actually balance the cost associated in producing the memory if we if we can produce a faster uh, secondary storage um, that would be I think helpful in terms of performance but unfortunately um, there is a balance of cost and and cost associated with producing the different storage as uh, storage or memory uh, on the persistence or latency this is this refers to how long the storage would be so that, so that means the CPU will easily remove the data it will store its data in reality when once the computer is torn off it will it will okay torn off and the, the, the data will also be lost where and compared to the secondary storage where the, it's designed to hold the data uh, so we have also the random access memory can be accessed at any time at the same time areas may be represented by bytes so if you can imagine this is how the random access memory looks like and each um, each box might be represented into bytes um, uh, sleep and hibernate um, I forgot what is this all about but I think um, uh, uh, the random access memory has actually some minimal uh, power that's stored within the random access memory such that when the computer sleep uh, or hibernate uh, the they store certain types a uh, certain uh, programs in your computer so that when you open it again the data will be still present because we assume that when you turn off the computer the, the, the data in your random access memory will be lost but during sleep what happened uh, they, this is a, there is a mechanism in your computer that they will temporarily store the data in the random access memory so, or uh, some some other uh, organization also stored in your secondary storage device but somehow during sleep and hibernate uh, there is a small amount of power that make your data uh, appear easily when you turn on the computer again but the idea of random access memory this is the RAM that also displayed when you buy a computer um, so secondary storage before uh, so you need to learn also the, the basic idea of the spinning drives before or mag the magnetic desk that's, which is more cheaper or your hard disk compared to your solid state drive which is the recent development in, in the storage devices and in fact majority of the computers as of now especially portable computers already use this sub solid state device uh, drive that means um, there's no rotating device uh, there's no rotating aspects in your computer um, and the idea of having having the SSD when you see SSD in your computer that means it has less movable parts or compared to each uh, your hard disk drive which maybe you've learned this during your high school uh, the one that uh, the one with different disks at different levels while the, the SSD is uh, there's no there's no mag magnetic disk the idea here is like your USB storage device but because it is also costly we cannot just use um, a lot of SSD in your computer but you also limit the number of SSD and the components of SSD we look at into the storage device because this is quite new um, new to the computer organization how they came up with the SSD so this is the organization of SSD and somehow the host or interface is connected so if you look at this one there is already something like a processor type or 
within your SSD before they were stored actually in the flash. In this diagram is flash package or packages. So this one, they, they store some of the data here, but uh, somehow they have the they have the components that the control, this is the SSD controller that will um, manage the storage within the SSD. <clears throat> And so with that, I think um, uh, at least you have a background on those hardware um, information for you to remember, if ever, if you haven't, haven't learned that. But the purpose of the lecture is to give you a refresher about uh, different components of the computer before we will dig into the operating system, which is my focus for my second lecture. And so with that, um, have a nice day.